Welcome to episode 11 of Coffee with Braz, brought to you by Victorian Responsible Gambling Foundation, Love the Game. This week, we'll be talking to one of my fiercest teammates, Khalifa McCollin. Meet Khalifa McCollin, the scary one of our team. Now, when I say scary, I mean it. All you have to do is look at her game day face and you know what I mean. This girl is here to play and when she plays, she means business. Khalifa is a player you love to have on your team because you know she will do anything that the team needs to get the win. Meet my fierce teammate, Khalifa McCollin. Welcome to Coffee with Raz Khalifa. Thanks for having me. Uh, First of all, what's your coffee order? So I don't really drink coffee, um, but I'm having hot chocolate. Why the hot chocolate? And why not coffee? Because <laughs> like coffee for me is like gets me through the day. It's social. It's just the thing to do. See, coffee really isn't a thing in Trinidad and Tobago. So um, yeah, we will definitely go hot chocolate over coffee. Yeah, is tea a thing? Yeah, we love tea. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll just go in the yard, pick up some any bush, and make tea out of it. I think. Yeah. Oh, so you make. Tea from scratch. Yeah. It's not like out of a tea bag. No, so we have tea bags. Talk but, to me. You know, you can go in your garden and your granny might say, you know, yeah, you could use that bush for something or you could use this bush for something. And yeah, we just we do that. <laughs> what's your favorite? What's your favorite bush? Don't so, have a favorite because I don't like it. <laughs> oh, you don't like it? That, <laughs> no. You're just too hot yeah, chocolate. Yeah, hot chocolate and traditional tea bags. That's it. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like, I know you, you told me before, but you like coffee ice cream. Yeah, I love coffee ice cream. So Hagen does has like a tiramisu ice cream. So that's yeah. coffee based. And that's my favorite. Yeah. yeah. But no coffee. No coffee. No coffee no milkshakes. Coffee. No, never. No. <laughs> Do you like chocolate ice cream? Um, Not really. See, that's your a weedo. No. I always knew you are a weedo. I don't like chocolate. It's to the bottom of my list. Yeah. Not a fish choice. <laughs> yeah. No, I love that. I love that. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk about your family first because... I did a bit of research mm-hmm. and I already love the family dynamic because they seem to love netball. Yeah, yeah. And they get netball <laughs> because your mum played it, your mm-hmm. dad played it, mm-hmm. and your dad just didn't play it, but he was the captain of the Trinidad and Tobago team. Yeah, so he was the captain of the men's national team. Um, my mom, she played like um, age group nationals and she was also um, the national coach at one time. Um, this year she was coaching the national under 21s, but of course their tournament got canceled. So yeah, it's just a big netball family. <laughs> and how do you go with that? Because from my experience, like both mum and dad played netball, my wife plays netball. And <laughs> when I finish netball and I get into the car, Brooke's like, please, can we talk about the game? <laughs> and I'm like, no, like, I don't even want to talk about it. And like, we've come to an arrangement that I, I give Brooke five minutes oh. and I literally check my watch and it's five minutes and I'm like, okay, 10 seconds. Like, this is, but do you, do you love that about your family? Can you talk netball about them or do you get to a point where you're like, all right, we're good here? Well, even if I get to that point, they still go on. <laughs> 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 There's no arrangement in place. We talk about netball morning, noon and night. Yeah. So um, let's say for instance, Saturday, they were texting during the game. Like I can't even respond to that. <laughs> you know, um, at this the time, game. this is what you Yeah, did. exactly. You know, um, they were trying to call me. I'm like, well, you know, I'm on court side, so I can't really yeah. answer that. <laughs> but yeah, um, they really get involved. They get behind me wherever I am. And um, they're just really supportive, I think. And just want to see me do well. Yeah, that's amazing. And what, like, if they're watching it live, what's the time difference? Um, probably like 16 hours. So we played at 7 and um, it was 5 o'clock, like 5 a.m. back yeah. home. So they were like up ready to go. They were even yeah. like watching the games before. So, so Lord, they just love netball. Yeah. <laughs> so Lord knows how, like how late they were up and like they didn't get any sleep. So I was like, damn, that's yeah. crazy. <laughs> Well, tell, tell me what it was like growing up in Trinidad and Tobago because I've got no idea what it's like. Like we've mm-hmm. had our conversations, like what it's like, but I still don't really understand. Like what, tell everyone what it's like to live there. Um, so in Trinidad and Tobago, I think we're heavily rooted in our culture. Um, so we have this massive um, event called Carnival, which is um, like probably the biggest event in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, people from all over the world attend it's like just a celebration, you know, just a celebration for life. Um, but yeah, people wear these costumes and they go out on the streets and just have a grand time. So um, that was really big for me growing up. Um, and um, So it's just celebrating life. 
Yeah, um, so there's a there's history behind that. Yeah. Um, we weren't really taught the history. We just know big celebration, it's big party, party. Yeah. have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Last good. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, and then um, you know, we love sports as well. So I was involved in so many sports growing up. Um, the only thing I didn't do is um tennis. Um, but yeah, I was involved in volleyball, basketball, track and field. Um, I probably only won medals in track because I was athletic, but, um, <laughs> yeah, karate, dance. Yeah, yeah. My parents just like pushed me in everything and yeah. I just, I guess, chose netball eventually. <laughs> yeah. And what island did you live on? Um, I lived on Trinidad. I lived in Trinidad. Yeah. Which is um, a city. Yeah. So Trinidad is like the bigger island of the two. Yeah. Um, you can take like a boat, which will take you like two hours to get to Tobago or you could hop on a plane, take you like 15 to 30 minutes. Yeah. So yeah, um, Tobago is like, just like simple, just cool, casual. If you just want to go relax, go to Tobago. If so you want to party. That's where I would live, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> and the beaches are better in Tobago. Yeah. Um, if you want to party, have a great night, turn it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah. either laid back or party central is pretty much the vibe I'm getting yeah, right here. Yeah. <laughs> nah, that's unreal. Uh, and it, to be honest, like, I'm just going to go back to, to your parents mm -hmm. because I grew up watching my parents, both mum and dad, play netball. And I mm -hmm. thought it was unbelievable. And they just played for like our, like a local team. Like it's a bit of fun. And dad, like they both played mix. But the fact that you grew up watching your mum play and coach like at such a high level mm -hmm. and your dad captain the highest level mm -hmm. he could make, like, do you put any of that down to your netball career? Um, absolutely. I think what was great for me, like I always wanted to play, like my mom doesn't know this, but I always wanted to play like netball with my mom. Yeah. And um, luckily I got to have that experience um, with our club team. Because, you know, one of our shooters was missing and, and and she was like, you know what? Give me a uniform. She popped the uniform on and she was that goal shooter. I was that goal attack. And it was just like so amazing to like see her in action and just, you know, partner with her in that circle. Um, she was like taking shots from ev anywhere. <laughs> and, you know, they were just like slotting and like swish. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's my, my mom. mom. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just like really good to see, I think, you know, just having both of them there and, you know, just them involved in the sport. Um, my dad, he's a defender. So um, that comes in handy. Um, you know, we get very competitive if he's playing against me. He's like, nope, you're not going to get that next ball. You're not going to get that next one. I'm like, I'll show you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I just love it. Yeah. And, and you started playing netball pretty young. Like yeah. You started at the age of six. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like most six-year-olds in Australia, when they start playing netball, they go through a program called Net Set Go. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if you've heard of mm -hmm. that. And you... You don't even really play the game. It's just like skill based and it's just, you know, you're hanging out with mates and it's more just like I'd put my kid in it just so they get coordinated <laughs> where you as a six year old rock up and start playing against teenagers. Yeah. So I, I was already like involved, involved in that ball at six. I think like growing up, probably when I was like four, I would just be at the sidelines looking on, just looking at everybody. And, um, you know, I think you don't pay as much attention to a four year old at the sidelines, but really and truly they're like picking things up as they go along so i guess like my parents just like put me on just to see what i can do and i guess they were probably surprised that you know like how much i probably learned by just looking yeah. um so yeah we didn't have like a, a young team like a team that age so i had to play with the teenagers they hated me by the way because yeah. <laughs> you're probably beating them <laughs> you know um i think um they, they started like not passing the ball to me at one point. So I would just like sit down in the middle of the court when I didn't get my way. I was like, nope, not having this. I don't want to play anymore. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I, can was... still, I can actually <laughs> see you doing that now with yeah. us. I'm not going to throw you the ball just to see if you sit down. <laughs> but um, my start in position was wing defense. Um, oh, I knew we were good friends. <laughs> I took that very seriously. Like I was all up on the wing attack. <laughs> But yeah, I'd say explain with teenagers. I think that was like a massive thing for me. And give me, what is your favorite position? Because like you're a goal now, you wing defense back then. See, I like goal defense. Like yeah. I really I'll, like I'm goal with you defense. On that. Yeah. I reckon it's one of the best positions. Yeah, I think like I love shooting. I love like creating plays and things like that. But like as a defender, you could read that game and like go for a big in intercept, like play a team defense. Like I just, I just love defense, I think. Um, but you can tell that in your game, like yeah. being a goal, like you're a defensive goal attack, which is pretty rare. Yeah, like, I just... And as a defender, for me, if a goal attack gets an intercept, 
like I just get so pumped one because I don't have to do my <laughs> job. You've done it for me. But two, like it's so rare that you see attackers actually get intercepts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, my age group competition. So we have this like Caribbean tournament, under sixteen tournament. I remember we were playing against um, Saint Lucia, and we were losing by like a couple goals. And I went to the coach and I was like, "Listen, um, put me on as <laughs> as goalie fans, or I'll sit down. <laughs> <laughs> right, put me on. If it doesn't work, it's fine. Like just just take me off, but." Just, just try it. Just try it. Like I really want to do it. And I went out there, and I was like getting balls, getting intercepts, and I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> I'm <laughs> like, alive." <laughs> you know, we ended up winning the game, and I was like so happy about it because, you know, of course, I'm a shooter. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it was brave for me to just like go to the coach, and you know, just good for her to trust me. Yeah. To actually like make Back that you change. In. Yeah, I, I think, think that was real good. I think that's pretty important, though. Like it's rare that. I think an athlete will actually go up to a coach and say that. Mm -hmm. But I think backing a player in and if they're confident enough to do it, I think you got to do it as a coach. I would do it because I'm like, well, if they're backing themselves in, Mm -hmm. I feel like anything could happen here. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) So starting as a six-year-old, when did netball then get serious? Because you've travelled the world. Mm -hmm. Like at what stage of your life did you go, this could be my career? Um, Probably when I was like 17. So that was when I... um, Still at school? At that stage or? Yeah, like just leaving school then. Yeah. Um, so I made the under 21s at 17. And um, there of was a oppor- Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was an opportunity to like, um, you know, go trial for the seniors. And I was like, okay, let's see how this goes. But um, during our under 21 tournament, um, there were people looking on and they offered me a contract to play in the UK. Now I called my mom and I was like, yeah, like this happened. And she was like, no. Not going to happen. I'm not sending my only child mm. to the UK by herself to play any netball. At 17. Yeah. I agree. You know, and I'd do the same thing. Yeah. yeah. And at that time, um, you know, we weren't familiar with like um, like the leagues and, and things like that. So it was just like unknown territory. Mm. Like, what am I sending my kid there to do? So um, I was really upset about it. But something we say back home is like, what misses you won't ever pass you. So you'll always come back. Um, I love that. Yeah. That's really cool. So I managed to, you know, get to senior training. Um, the coach immediately, like, shoved me to center and wing attack. And I was like, well, that's not my position. So I went to him and I was like, listen, um, you know, in a respectful way, I was like, I prefer you drop me as a as a goaler than you select me as a, a mid-court player. Like, that is mm-hmm. definitely not my position. Fair enough. Managed to, to make the senior team. Um, my first tour was to South Africa. Um, that time you had like Carla playing there, Pumza playing there. Yeah. Um, that was massive for me. Um, it's massive for anyone. Yeah. Especially playing against players like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So I debuted and I had a really, really good debut. And um, af- that, the year after that was Commonwealth Games. And um, I was like, you know what? Like that, that time we ended up like seeing, like watching a whole lot of netball. So we started um, getting involved with the leagues. And I was like, well... You know, maybe that could be me. Like, maybe I could get an opportunity out there. Played Commonwealth Games, played World Cup, and that's when I got, got my first call. And I was like, yeah, yeah like, this, this, this is it. <laughs> I love that you talk about, like, just saying, like, oh, yeah, I started coming serious when I was 17, and then I played Com Games and World Cup. Like, <laughs> playing Com Games and World Cup, like, that is, like, the pinnacle of being a netballer. And you're like, yeah, it came, like, it was pretty serious after that. Like, no, you, you playing World Cup. Yeah. And Com Games is massive. Like, yeah, it's huge. I think, like, I don't, I don't know, maybe I always want more. Yeah, I love so that. It's that's like, a good yeah, that's yeah. good, but I want something else. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I want more, you yeah. know? I'm here, but I want more. <laughs> yeah. And so you're, f- when it, um, so you played your Com Games, you played World Cup, mm-hmm. and then was it England that you first went to? Yeah. Celtic yeah. Dragons? Yeah. So went to Dragons. Um, the coach at that time was Trish. Just recently, I tweeted about her, yeah. and I was like, "I'm so thankful." What you tweet about? I was like, "I'm thankful for you know for her giving me that start," um, because I was quite young, you know, a fresh fresh out of World Cup, fresh out of under twenty one. It's like you know, you're just picking this girl up, yeah. <laughs> um, not knowing much about her. But yeah, she gave me that start, and she was like really behind me. I think like really really supportive. She taught me a whole lot. So, yeah, just really grateful for that opportunity, I think. Yeah. And what was it like um, going from Trinidad and Tobago, uh, living in England? I think my first year was very difficult. Like, I would sit in my room and cry. Yeah. You know, because I'm like, I'm away from my family. It's massive. Yeah. 
but um good enough my parents came over yeah. <laughs> and they were like they were they were the life of the party there like the crowd in in wales um was, you know it's casual with clap now and then my parents got there and they were starting a party like they were screaming yeah. they had the crowd going like pumping everybody up and that meant so much to me like you know just having your family over like that was that was that was so great yeah. um, so you lived in wales yeah lived in wales yeah. and you what's know, it like, like there rainy yeah <laughs> cold very cold um but i loved it i think the girls and i had a like we were like family yeah. and we still have a great friendship like i wish i could travel now see them yeah. but we talk all the time we keep in contact so yeah, yeah. it's really and nice so what did you as a player what did you get from that like because i'm gonna ask you about every different mm-hmm. country you've played in but is there anything that you took from the way they play netball into your game um hmm so I think it was good coming up against like the English players because they have their own style of yeah of very netball. different style yeah I think for me like it was always a challenge every week mm. so I was like okay I'm coming up against somebody like Ebony Ebony is like a massive structure like everybody knows Ebony Becca Chambers uh um you saw a Brown yes oh yeah yeah she used to be Becca Chambers yeah yeah so I, I played yeah. with her at Fever oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. she's so, a um, unit yeah she's absolutely a very good player <laughs> and well. my thing was always like conquer ebony this week yeah. <laughs> you know so um, after coming off of my first year i was like no definitely didn't do that so you know like every year that was it for me you know just being able to like it was just i don't know i would just like write things down in a book and just tick off the defenders i thought well yeah i had the upper hand this time you know yeah. and i think like um after my third year in the uk when i like i describe it as like me floating through the the competition like i felt like i needed to to get out and challenge myself a bit more yeah. because I was getting accustomed to the style that they would play. I was getting accustomed to the players. So I was like, okay. You You're very a, comfortable. Yeah. So I was like, okay, you need to challenge yourself a little bit more. Yeah. And was that when you moved to New Zealand? Yeah. So three years in Wales. Mm-hmm. And yeah. yeah. And did you change teams? You were always with the Dragons. Yeah. So I moved from Dragons to Mavericks and then yeah. back to Dragons okay. in my third year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then New Zealand. Then New Zealand. How did that? How did that happen? Did you get a <laughs> phone call, or did you have to apply to go Facebook. over there? <laughs> Facebook. It's a great story. It's kind of <laughs> like Tinder. <laughs> Swiping what player you want. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, I got a message, um, and it was like, you know, um, can you send your number? Just want to talk to you about an opportunity. And I was like, oh yeah, okay, no problem. Um, got a call from the coach, and I was like, yep. Yeah. Didn't even think twice. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> you can have me. Take yeah. me. <laughs> And yeah, um, got there and um, it was pretty intense yeah. for the, the first time. Like Massive step up. Yeah, mm. big time. And who'd you play for? Uh, Southern Steel. Yeah. So who, like, I'm not sure now, but mm-hmm. when we were playing, we were a pretty successful side. Mm-hmm. So last year wasn't too great. Yeah. Um, but as I said, like the training was a massive step up. Like we were yeah. training every day and that's the big difference between the English league and you know, you guys and the ANZ. Um, the English League, you don't really train every day, don't put in as much hours, mm-hmm. but got to New Zealand and it was like every day, full on intense training. And I was like, oh my God, what did I get myself into? Yeah, <laughs> but, this is different. <laughs> yeah, but I just love challenging myself. Like I remember we would like run so much. It was like so much running. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> Pre- just pre-season or even yeah, through the season? Yeah, pre-season, yeah. during the season. <laughs> <Just it was laughs> non-stop running. Yeah. You could have played centre. <laughs> but um, yeah, I quite enjoyed it. Um, I think the uh, New Zealand League is quite physical and yeah. that's why I loved it so much. Yeah. It was like really, really physical and that's something that they would teach you to put into your game. Yeah. So I um, came up against people like Jane, Temelisi and I was like, yeah definitely looking forward to this challenge week in week out so yeah and so you like so you reckon you learned being a bit physical from them yeah yeah how do you find playing against like the zone or doing the zone because like new zealand for us like whenever Mm -hmm. australia play new zealand like you know you're going to come up against the Mm -hmm. best zone in the world Mm -hmm. so that's the thing like every single team that we would come up against did the same zone that we were doing yeah so So that was easier yeah it was a lot easier to um you know just adjust to just adjust your play to, you know, yeah. like... Because you got to train against it. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think something that they do often is like body up. Yeah. So you meet the body and you go again. And that's that was just us like learning to get through that zone and play that short ball. 
So yeah. um yeah. Yeah. And like one one thing I love about you is um and I'm talking about imports, right? Because yeah. we've got Shimmy, we've got Jody, both who just love to sleep. <laughs> Where like you ask them what do they get up to and and they've, they've all slept all day, um, but then I ask you like oh how you been and like you're out and about in Melbourne you're out and about and doing this we, did you check out New Zealand because like New Zealand is a place I would love to live I find New Zealand incredible I think it's the most beautiful country in the world did you get out and see any cool places yeah so um so luckily I had a car then um, was able to drive to Queenstown and explore a bit. Um, what did we do? We and you're adventurous. Did you yeah. did you do anything? Did you do anything um, cool so in Queenstown? Unfortunately, it was during COVID. Yeah. So oh, they had like even. yeah some of the places that we wanted to go to. So we wanted to go to like the ice factory. Couldn't do that. Um. So we got to do like indoor skydiving, yeah. which was like more or less like you know I want to skydive. So have you skydived? No. So you maybe play. for my birthday this year, July 18th. You know, we have a game on the 17th, on the 18th. I'll be out there. Richo, Richo, <laughs> ignore this because I will make sure she won't. So we would definitely be going skydiving. But Richo, we definitely won't be doing it. Like I know it's in the contract. But, um, but yeah. No, that's cool. Well, you mm-hmm. have to skydive. I've done mm-hmm. it twice and it's the best mm. feeling ever. Have you bungeed before? No. I don't want to do that. You can do that by yourself. Really? You it. Yes. I don't have like I don't know why I'm okay jumping out of a plane but not <laughs> off a bridge. I'm, I don't know what it is, but yeah, the skydive for me that the free fall is just like the best feeling. Yeah, yeah. But we definitely need to do that. <laughs> you talked about COVID, so you I didn't realize you were in New Zealand during COVID. Yeah, yeah. So um, the league started. We played our first match, and then like the week after, it was like kind of uncertain about things. Yeah. And then we got this message like we're going into lockdown. So. We're not sure what the league is going to look like. Um, so they were like, you know what? We're going to still train at home. So it was kind of hard, like, training by yourself. Yeah. You know, at some point you got, like, tired of it. Like, you miss your teammates. You miss just being around everybody. So we were in lockdown for about, like, six weeks. Yeah. And then we were able to go back out to training. But we had to be, like, two feet, sit two feet apart from each other, even though we were, like, rubbing on each other on the court. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makes no <laughs> sense, does it? Yeah. So two feet apart from each other and the competition resumed. But we all play like so we would travel and play in one place and then go home. Yeah. Um it had a spike again, competition ended, we didn't get to play like playoffs or didn't, anything. You guys didn't play have a grand final. <laughs> no, so I the have grand been final under a rock because <laughs> the grand I didn't final know played, that. but the other games like third and fourth and oh, okay. they didn't play. Yeah. So yeah. Spewing. <laughs> and so after that, did you just go home? So I couldn't get home. Yeah. Um, I had to like travel to Barbados. I spent like two months in Barbados before I was able to like go home. And was COVID there? Um, no. It's so they cool had like no, yeah. no cases. I was like on boat rides. I was at the beach. <laughs> you were living the life <laughs> up while we were all stuck in houses. I was having a grand time in Barbados. Yeah. And as soon as I left, there was a spike in Barbados and I was like, oh, missed yeah. out on that. <laughs> yeah. And what about home? So then you obviously got home after the two months. Yeah, so home wasn't too bad. I mean, there were cases, but the place was like a little bit, um, it was open. Yeah. Um, but now at the moment, like there was a spike like right after Easter. Yeah. So the place is back into lockdown now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And while you were there, Richo, I remember mm-hmm. came in one day and was like, oh, Khalifa's training and she's pulling out the goalpost. And, yeah. Um, <laughs> was like, obviously, I think she was stoked because your parents had that, I guess, intel about netball and mm-hmm. um, their high performance. Mm-hmm. Um, so she was happy that they could coach you. What was it like going back from like three years in England, stint in New Zealand, and now I'm back where my parents are coaching me <laughs> so I can play for Collingwood? Now, what was that like? <laughs> um, it was all right. Um, my dad would be on my... But every morning he like get up, get up, time to go, time to go outside, and I'm like, oh, can I just have? Were a... you ever like, no, dad? Yeah, I was like, like not today, please, just <laughs> just give me some time, and he'll be like, nope, come on, let's. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, really? But um, <laughs> it can be annoying sometimes, but I think it's good that they're like always behind me and a bit nagging <laughs> because yeah. you know sometimes you could get a bit complacent, like oh, just give me a break. Yeah. But um, yeah, they were always on me to like. Just get up, just get it done. And yeah. yeah, you could just have the rest of the day to do whatever. <laughs> I really hope COVID ends so they can come here and I can meet them because oh, they sound goodness. like amazing like, people. My parents are amazing. Like I think if it wasn't for COVID, like they would be here just Yeah. Just everywhere magpies go, they'll be. <laughs> yeah. 
And how do you go like being away from them now? Like obviously the first year was tough. Mm-hmm. Um, now being away, like it's you, you know now what it's like to be yeah. away, but it's still hard. Are you how are you going with that? Yeah, it's still hard. I think like when we had our dress presentation mm. and they sent that video, I was I was tearing up like I cried. I <laughs> they were awesome. I was like, oh, just just suck it back in. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I think um, it's still quite hard because we live together. I live with my parents, and like my parents are my everything. Yeah. So um, it's still quite hard. But um, I speak to them all the time. So yeah. like every time I'm on my phone talking to my parents, I'll call them probably three times a day. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, at least we get to connect through like social media and stuff. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Um going to go back to your comment about like world cup and com games mm-hmm. and like you only started after that which <laughs> blows my mind but um i've never been to either one oh. so what is your favorite because com games is obviously next year world cups are following mm-hmm. you if you could only go to one which one would it be well i'll go with com games yeah and why is that well oof. i think com games you get more like is a lot more chilled, right? Even though it's competitive, you get to like mingle with people. You get to actually like socialize versus mm-hmm. like World Cup. You like focused on like really, really focused on like actually winning and doing stuff. Even though yeah. you know, com games is the same thing. You want to win, yeah. but like you get to interact with people from different sports, from different countries, and you just make new friends. You know, and that's and what like every person I talk to about going to com games. They always talk about like you just said, meeting yeah. other athletes, going to watch <laughs> other sports. Um, and pretty much it just being a big party. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sounds awesome. I remember, like, um, I think it was, like, the netball final or something like that. I think Jamaica was playing probably semifinals for Com Games 2014, and Usain Bolt walked in, and the camera just shifted from the game to Usain, and everybody was, like, up and screaming, like, hey, it's Usain. Yeah. <laughs> it was just really... How cool that he came to watch netball. <laughs> yeah, it was, like, really, really cool, you know? You just, like, you know, and he would just be passing by in the village and just, like, you know, just cool with everybody. You Like, you see this guy on TV, he's, like, winning medals, winning gold medals. I was, like, oh, my God, yeah. superstar. Yeah. And then he's just, like, walking about freely, like, eh, yeah. Just, like, a normal guy. Yeah. yeah. You know, so it's just, like, real chill. Like, just... <laughs> yeah. I love that about Com Games. Yeah. And a player that you played with and who currently plays in SSN and dominating, like so Sam Wallace, one of my favourite players. <laughs> um, I just think she's not just a good player, but what I know of her seems like a beautiful person. Mm-hmm. Um, what's she like to play with? Oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> so Sam and I have been playing since we were like, what, 12 maybe? Yeah. yeah See, that's, so. And now you're both in Australia. Like that's mind blowing. Yeah. So um, I think we have like a really good connection on court. Um, Sam, as you said, like is a beautiful person, like off court as well, like very, very genuine person, very raw, very real. Um, but yeah, just an awesome player to play with. I think like I could, I could close my eyes and feed a ball into Sam and know that she's gonna get that ball. Like she's gonna do anything she can to yeah. get that ball. You know? Um, yeah, like we just have that unspoken connection. Like we're just mm. at that place. Like we've been playing together for just trust. For, yeah, for so long. Like um, just recently I was like scrolling through my phone and looking at like highlights from the last World Cup. And just like some of the things that we did together is just like amazing. Like you just, you take that for granted sometimes. Like we just build that connection and I think it's just great. Yeah, she's unreal, but I'm waiting for you to like, just, you know, (laughs) prove that you're the number one (laughs) shooter from Trinidad and Tobago. Um, But moving on to Collingwood. Mm -hmm. So you signed with the club, you came over, we had no idea, like, really who you were. Mm-hmm. Like, we, we played against you in New Zealand or we saw mm-hmm. you. We, I don't think we even played against no. you, but we saw mm-hmm. you play. Um, was that scary coming over not really knowing anyone or did you know a few of the players? Um, so I knew of you guys, but, yeah. like, not, like, personally. Yeah. And same with George, like, didn't really have, like, a relationship with George per se. Just, like, you know, you see them and just hi. Yeah. But that's about it. And I was just kind of like, well, this is like really new, like really, really fresh. Yeah. Don't know what these guys are going to be like. You know, just, you know, you speak to you guys on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. And it's all good. But sometimes you meet people and it's quite different. 100%. But I think like get in here. You guys are like really, really cool, very supportive. And I think that was so good. To, yeah. You know. oh, that's really nice. <laughs> She's talking about me to the team that are listening. And she's talking about me. Um, no, but one thing like, because... I wasn't, I didn't know who you were. And so like one, you instantly fit into the team. 
But what stood out to me is when we went on our army camp for oh, pre-season. Yeah. <laughs> and for me, like, I love those kind of things. I wasn't able to participate in a lot of it because mm-hmm. I was at a game the following day with footy. Mm-hmm. Um, so everyone, everyone was a bit – put me in cotton wool pretty much. <laughs> I was pretty – I hated it. I was embarrassed. <laughs> but it was kind of cool because I got to s- sit back in certain things and, like, watch the team mm-hmm. who stood up in certain moments when other players weren't doing um, well in certain things, who would stand up. And for me, you just like won me over. Like <laughs> everything we did, like you, I remember like looking at you and I'm like, she's actually going to kill someone. <laughs> like you were just so fierce. Whatever we had to do, you would probably pick up like the heaviest thing. You took it for like there was no complaining. Mm-hmm. Um, where half the time I complained jokingly just to get through <laughs> things like because I f- just try and make it funny where you were just so focused. And the thing that stood out for me was um, obviously everyone listening wasn't there, but we had this um, ring of death and it was in a sand pit and it was just a 1v1 and you had to pin your player down on the ground for three seconds. And it was pretty good. Everyone was really competitive. It lasted a while. Um, <laughs> where Khalifa's first competitor was Gabby and Khalifa walked up and her <laughs> face, like the expression <laughs> on her face, like honestly was a killer. Like I was like, she's definitely killed someone before. Oh, like, and Gabby's face was like she terror. Like she wanted out and if I was her, I would want out. And then the whistle was blown and you go forward. I don't even know. It was like you just fell on her and like it was over within three seconds. Oh, goodness. Like I was just ready for war. I was like, you know what? This is going to be a war. All right. I want my team to win. Yeah. So just just do it. I'm going to find the <laughs> footage. In. Yeah, I'm going to find the footage. I'm sorry for everyone listening on the podcast, but the YouTube people watching, it's going to be up because it was so good. And scary. And we were all like, no one even cheered you for, I reckon, a few seconds because we were all like, is Gabby alive? <laughs> like, we were just in so See, much shock. like, I love things like that. Like, I love a good challenge. Yeah. And I think that day was, like, a challenge in itself. Like, it was it was hard. But, um, you know, like, I just wanted to, to do it. Like, I just wanted to, to do more to, like, you know, it was, like, it took a lot of grit. Yeah, and I it think, was tough. Like, yeah, it was tough. You know, after you do one thing that is very hard, they come with something else that is even harder or equally, mm. you know. So I'm like, oh, my goodness. Like, you know, I just I just I really enjoyed it, to be yeah, honest. I love it, too. And it's something I don't know about other countries, but mm-hmm. it's something like I think Australian netball has gone away from is those mm-hmm. hard physical camps because mm-hmm. I guess you worry about injuries, you worry about different environments and all like that. But mm-hmm. for me, I reckon it brought our team close yeah, together so because too. it we took us out of our comfort zone and we've yeah. like we've got memories that things like you <laughs> tackling Gabby is something like I will never forget and will laugh yeah. about um forever it was the funniest <laughs> thing I've ever seen but yeah for me I think they're 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 really important for yeah. groups yeah absolutely I yeah. agree with that yeah. and as you said like I think that was a moment where you know the team kind of came together yeah you know like you got to see everyone like in that, in that yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in that place and we finished as a team like there was nobody behind nobody struggling like everybody was just like pulling each other along and i think that was so so good to see and experience yeah 100 <laughs> percent. and then we come to your debut with the club so oh, yeah <laughs> it was just happened this saturday how did you feel um so i i remember going into the bathroom so I'm quite a religious person, you know, so yeah. I went into the bathroom and I was like saying a prayer and then I started crying. I'm like, this is a moment, guys. <laughs> you know, and I was like really, really crying because like not that I was nervous or anything, but it was like, this is like actually happening. Like this is this is a, a moment for me. Yeah. Like this is big for me. And then I was like, you know, um, you have so much support, woman. I was just feeling like loved and, you know, just just in a, a safe place. Yeah. And um, I went out there like when I got my opportunity and I was like, you know, you've been training hard. Like, don't worry about it. Just just do what you know you could do. And yeah, just just did it. <laughs> yeah. I was like happy that I scored my first shot. And then right after that, I got the super shot. So I was like, yeah, just come on, let's do this. The super <laughs> shot was unreal. Another thing I'm going to put on the YouTube because <laughs> your reaction and I think having a goal attack or a goal shooter that Mm -hmm. is that passionate and like Mm -hmm. I guess this is one thing I struggle with with netball right Mm -hmm. is we don't celebrate goals Mm -hmm. where being an AFLW player every goal is celebrated and I know Mm -hmm. we celebrate footy goals because they don't happen like as often as netball Mm -hmm. do but like getting a goal is massive 
Yeah, it is. And if you don't get goals, you don't win games. So, <laughs> like, the celebration after that two-point shot, and I think that's what the two-point shot brings in, mm-hmm. is, like, everyone gets yeah. so pumped up. Yeah. To see you do, like, the double <laughs> fist pump, like, I was like, this girl is ready to play. Yeah. And I think, yeah. I, mm-hmm. I, and I don't. I reckon a lot of us missed it, but watching it on the highlights um, this morning before training, I was like, <laughs> everyone look at this because this is how we should play. Yeah, like, somebody messaged me and they were like, that was so poor reason for them. They were like, they're not accustomed to watching that ball, but they saw that highlight and they were like, yeah, like, wow, like, that got them going. Yeah, it got like, me going. <laughs> I love it. I was like, yeah. Like you should watch Neville more often. You'll see more of that. Yeah. <laughs> but I think you know, like just celebrate any good things is like really, really important. Somebody I see do it all the time is um Kamwenda. Yeah. Like she just like screams behind yeah, the like clapping like, the yeah. hands. Yeah, and that just like gets everybody pumped. Yeah. And I think that's super important for like a team. Yeah. Well, if you can keep doing that, <laughs> that, that would be really appreciated. <laughs> now I've had a lot of um people. Um, ask me questions about you because this week we did the black and white <laughs> show and you talked about your game day superstition <laughs> and how you wear the same socks mm-hmm. every game. Mm-hmm. Mind you, this is throughout the season, not just every game. So like training today, I had those socks on. All right, we just got, we just <laughs> went to a whole nother level. All right, hold up. So yeah. you have one pair of socks mm-hmm. that you train with just on court, right? Yeah. So yeah. not the gym days? No, not the gym days. Okay, yeah. so we're on court three. Mm-hmm. Three sessions a week plus the game. Yeah. With the same socks. With the same socks. And they have to last all year. All year. Okay, a few <laughs> of the questions I got. Do you, and this is going to blow their mind more because they didn't realise it was just training. <laughs> Do you throw the socks out at the end of the year? No, I keep them. Yeah, so I have this one pair of socks that, you know, like I had for a year and it has like a hole in it. And I still have it at home. Like, hopefully my mom hasn't thrown it out or anything, but I still have it. Mom, I know you're <laughs> listening to this. Go into her room and throw those socks out. <laughs> yeah, so I keep them. Like, I keep them for, like, good memories and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. it doesn't, they don't turn into the following year. Like, you start with a new pair. Yeah, start with a new pair. And and did this <laughs> new pair start from game one or has it been all preseason? Um, All preseason. So what I do, I'll wear it through, like, training sessions yeah. and then I'll wash it ready for game one and then hit and then the ground and then mm-hmm. because like i would say okay well you've got to wash them a lot but you don't wash them no i don't so this morning i got and to you think they in. smell like popcorn this yeah, is where it does no, not see, smell like popcorn i think they do i do feel you like air them out? no i don't i just like roll them fold them and stick them in a shoe <laughs> <laughs> this, listen it's more like butter popcorn to me you know, like the one you put them in the microwave and... I'm going to make you popcorn and get your <laughs> socks out and I'm not going to smell them, but I'll be like, this is the difference. You know what? If I blindfold you and I put them on the table, you would never know the difference. We're going to film that. It's going to happen. But... <laughs> I will definitely know the difference. And normally, normally I do white socks, but this year I couldn't get white socks, so I just went with black ones. Yeah. Yeah, so I got to training this morning and they were like really crusty at the... <laughs> They're like really hard, so I kind of had to like do crusty, <laughs> crusty, and popcorn do not go in the same <laughs> sentence. <laughs> so I, I like kind of like dust them off and like slip them on. I was ready to go. <laughs> okay, do you do this with any other item of clothing? No, just. <laughs> do you wash your dress? Yes, I do. Oh god! <laughs> so it's just the socks. Just the, just socks. the socks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. That like I was not expecting that. That we just went to a whole nother level. I can't wait to tell the team that the same socks are worn yeah. ev- all the time. I'm gonna just buy you like red <laughs> socks and just like replace them. No way. <laughs> <laughs> and how does Jody feel about this? Because you obviously live with Jody. Does she ever complain about sneaky socks? No, they don't because they didn't know. So like when Katie Ann heard the interview, she was like you better not bring those socks in the house. Yeah. And I was like, well, they've been here. so, <laughs> <laughs> And I've worn them for about this many weeks. Exactly. You just didn't know about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, so Katie Ann is, um, we're talking about the Vixens goalkeeper. So Khalifa lives with Katie Ann and Jodie Ann from yep. our team. How's that going living with two Jamaicans? Um, it's great. I think like we respect each other's space. But then like, you know, sometimes we come together and we'll watch like TV and have a meal. So we have dinner together and we do yeah. everything else, you know, just by yeah. ourselves. Do but you take turns cooking or is there a chef in the house? Yeah. So um, Jordi and I take turns cooking um, now that she's doing So like, you're feeding a vixen and she's not even cooking? No. Katie Ann, lift, <laughs> lift, girl, lift. <laughs> listen, I think we need to continue that way because... Katie can't cook. <laughs> last night, Katie, like we were making dumplings. 
And, you know, like, I saw the dumplings boiling. And they were looking fine. I went to my room, took a nap, got up smelling something. And it was like, something was smelling burnt. So I was like, what's going on? Went outside. The entire pot was black. The dumplings were burnt. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. Katie burnt the dumplings. And, so, like, the water <laughs> evaporated. Yes. And it was no- How long was that going for? <laughs> I hope your landlord's not listening to this. <laughs> he was like, Keep no. that girl out of the kitchen. <laughs> no water in the pot. The pot was like black. The dumplings were black. And like we only got like three dumplings out of the lot. Like she made about 12. We got three out of it. <laughs> it wasn't like the entire dumpling. She had to like cut pieces of it off. So I'm like, you know what? Kitty, you stay out of the kitchen. Jody and I would, would handle things. <laughs> oh my goodness. Kate Maloney, you're the captain. You play, can you please teach... Um, Katie, how to cook. <laughs> My girls need to eat. <laughs> Un- unbelievable. But you are loving it with them. Yeah, absolutely. I and think do they both just sleep? Um, Not as much as I do, I think. Like, oh, so you do sleep? I just like to rest. Sometimes I'm not sleeping because like, I could hear them. Is yeah. Callie sleeping? Is Callie? And I'm like, you know what? Let them think I'm sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just in bed, just relaxing, just yeah. chilling. Yeah. <laughs> and are you liking Melbourne? Yeah, I do like it. I think like everything is just like quite accessible so um where we live it's just easy to like hop on a tram and just get to the city and just explore (laughs) yeah last thing i want to talk about Mm -hmm. so when you retire Mm -hmm. you have you've talked to me about joining the mma or do it recreational but you're you're that fierce you could join the mma so mixed martial arts what is the what's the go with that from so, netball to mixed martial arts <laughs> like it's a very big difference yeah it is so i started doing karate when i was four because um you know i kind of used to get bullied as a youngster so my mom said you know what put her into to karate let her learn to defend herself and so i did um <laughs> so um of course karate so your mum has brought the fierce side out of you it Abs- wasn't new zealand absolutely. your mum put you in my karate mama. you know i got Go it from mom. my mama <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um started karate when i was four and I just loved it. I, I loved, you know, like you have to do like cutters and stuff, but I love the fighting part of it. Yeah. And um, yeah, like uh, that was my favorite part of karate, I think. Like yeah. just not just the cutters, because the cutters is like more of a routine, hey? Yeah. Yeah. The fighting part. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, like after a while, well, of course, like karate became too much. I was like, you know what? I'm like bored there. Um, and what, so what belt did you get up to? Brown. Yeah. Brown. Which is. Right before black. black. Yeah. So, um, you know, my parents were kind of like... They want to take us on because we'll throw <laughs> Khalifa right at you. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, my parents were kind of like pushing for me to go get the black belt. But, like, I was just tired of karate. So, I took a rest, um, jumped into ha- um, taekwondo. Um, so, the taekwondo, like, national coach saw me and she cool. was like, this this kid is good. Yeah. Um, so, I, like, trained with the national team for a bit. And how old were you at this stage? Um, probably, like, 14, 15. Yeah. Um, but I didn't like taekwondo as much because it's like not full contact when it comes to fighting. You crack so me like, up. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to hit anyone. <laughs> so I was like, I had to fake it. <laughs> so I was like, this is not for me. I don't want. I don't yeah. want to do this. Um, and then I saw Ronda Rousey on TV, and I was like, I want to do that. I want to be her. <laughs> I want to do that. Um, but yeah. Um, so when I was in the UK. I went to the coach and I was like, could I, could I join? <laughs> and she was like, what? No, no, you can't do that. But um, yeah, like hopefully after netball, I could. I reckon we go to Risho. Yeah. I reckon we ask the question <laughs> because I reckon it's just going to help your game. Yeah, I, listen. You just take people out. <laughs> yeah, it could just be for recreation. It doesn't have to be like competitive, you know, like I think knowing myself, I might be like, yeah, I'm good at this. Let me, let me, (laughs) let me hop into a ring and see what happens. But, um, yeah, I just, I just love the physicality of it. Like I, I enjoy that. Yeah. (laughs) You're a freak and I love you. I actually reckon you should play AFLW. I'd be so excited to see you tackle someone. Maybe I might try it. I might just try it. We're just going to skip Richard and go straight to Jane and ask a question. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) No, but thank you, Khalifa, so much for joining me on Coffee with Braz. You're unreal. I've, I love having you in my team. You make me laugh. You make me excited to play netball again, the way you go about your business and the way you train. So thank you for being a part Thanks of the team. Thanks for having me, buddy. And th- thank you for teaching me um, the TikToks that I, I still can't do. <laughs>